The U.S. Congress has approved more new sanctions against Iran and the latest bid to derail the country's nuclear program. It comes after an American federal judge ordered the country, along with al-Qaeda, Taliban and Hezbollah, to pay $6 billion for supposedly aiding the 9-11 attacks. Archie's Gaynet to Chikan explains now what might be next after the judgment. The whole trial is considered a symbolic move. Nobody's actually hoping to collect those penalties. Iran firmly denies any such accusations. Hezbollah, the same. Moreover, soon after 9-11, Hezbollah's leader uh, described al-Qaeda as, quote, an entity trapped in medieval ages and bent on killing innocent Muslims. So they're not exactly best friends. And the 9-11 commission back in the day also stated that, quote, we have found no evidence that Iran or Hezbollah was aware of the planning for what later became the 9-11 attack, end of quote. But the fact that now the U.S. justice system holds Iran partly responsible for 9-11 is most interesting, both in terms of timing and historical context. Back in 2003, as the U.S. waged war against Iraq, another U.S. federal judge ruled that Iraq must pay for 9-11 attacks. Very similar ruling. So have, you have this clear flashback when you look at the headlines from May 2003. Of course, the allegations that Saddam Hussein was doing business with al-Qaeda proved to be bogus, but that didn't matter at the time. Having solid evidence didn't matter at the time. Tensions skyrocketed on false grounds. With regards to uh, Iran, the timing is of importance. As far as its nuclear program, the Obama administration says they want diplomacy and negotiations to work. With the most recent ruling holding Iran responsible, partly responsible for 9-11, one can argue there may never be any easing of tensions or sanctions, even if Iran makes all concessions on its nuclear program.